What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is obviously part of a series where I focus on a specific director and rank that director's work from worst to best. I've done such directors in the past such as Martin Scorsese, Wes Anderson, Paul Tom Sampson, Christopher Nolan. The list goes on. There's many, many other directors, including those directors on my director playlist down below that you guys can check out. But guys, you clicked on this video so you know it. This time around, I'm focusing on Peter Weir's films and ranking them from worst to best. Now keep in mind, if you're new to the channel, this will not include any short movies, TV shows, TV movies, music videos, none of that. Just specifically speaking of the movies that he's done. And in the case of Peter Weir, he is done with films as of, uh, I believe it's 2010 when he did The Way Back. That was his last movie, so he's done 13. So I'll be ranking them from 13 being his worst to one in, in, of course, my personal opinion. So your list will definitely be different. And I am very curious to hear your guys' list on the ranking down below. But guys, enough exposition. Let's get started. So kicking things off with number 13, we have his debut, which is The Cars That Ate Paris. I wasn't a fan of this movie, but I will say I will give it props that it is quite original. And you can definitely tell by watching this movie that it was an inspiration um, for Mad Max. So I feel like if we didn't get this movie, we would have gotten Mad Max. So props to this movie. Besides that, and besides the fact that unless you're like myself trying to watch all Peter Weir's movies, there's no other real reason to watch this movie. It is pretty forgettable. And um, given the premise, it shouldn't be unforget. It shouldn't be forgettable. So yeah, that's why it's my number 13. Next up, my number 12 is Green Card. This is yet another forgettable entry, unfortunately, and I will say that it's a shame because the premise is there. It's definitely a premise that you read and you say to yourself, that could be good, but the actual execution leaves a lot to be desired. And I don't really think it's necessarily Peter Ware's fault because I will say that the directing itself has a little bit of interest, I will say. Like, there's a little bit of oomph to it, um, and it is decently acted, and I will say that the score is nice. It's well shot for the most part, but overall, the characters, the character development, the pacing, the story, just it's all so, so, so predictable that I just really couldn't get into the movie, unfortunately. It's a very paint-by-numbers movie, and uh, yeah, that's why it's my number 12. Next up, my number 11, and I apologize in advance because I know I'm going to butcher the pronunciation of this, but what else is new, right? Uh, my number 11 is Gallipoli. So this is a war movie, and I've realized as of late that war movies, a lot of them just don't really do much for me. And I gotta say, I feel like this is one of those prime examples of a movie where it's definitely something that's more of a me thing. Because I think that the actual story is something that is intriguing, and the filmmaking is quite good. I just th thought personally that the actual execution, for me just wasn't as interesting as the actual premise. And I do think that despite the filmmaking being interesting and despite the characters having potential, I just wasn't emotionally moved and I found myself to be quite distant watching this movie, um, despite it obviously trying to tug at the heartstrings. Maybe it's one of those movies I'll revisit down the line and I'll appreciate more, but for now, I think it's just okay. But I do think it's worth your time, especially if you dig war movies. And this one's definitely under the radar for a lot of people that like war movies. But um, yeah, that's why it's my number 11. Next up at number 10, it is Peter Weir's last movie, and that is The Way Back. Decent survival story, very well acted. It's got a great cast, um, decently shot. I also think that the score is quite nice, and um, the story itself also is intriguing. That said, I think that this is an okay to solidish movie. I do think that the characterization of the characters and the pacing does leave a lot to be desired, but it is still definitely worth your time. I mean, like I said, the cast is quite good. That alone is worth your time, but also keep in mind viewer signature touch does add some, uh, you know, watchability value to this movie as well. But um, yeah, that's why it's my number 10. Next up, my number nine is The Last Wave. So this movie is very, very fascinating. It is a vibe, if you will. It is quite fascinating at how it's able to take a vibe and really make the atmosphere feel palpable. I really liked what Peter Ware did with this film from the score to the acting choices that he, um, you know, obviously directed, and also the emphasis on visual storytelling. This is definitely a movie that's not going to be for everyone, but if you're on this movie's wavelength, I think you'll really appreciate it. And um, yeah, that's why it's my number nine. Next up, my number eight is The Year of Living Dangerously. So this I wasn't really looking forward to because despite liking Mel Gibson, well, despite liking Mel Gibson as an actor, I should preface, and liking Signori Weaver, I just thought to myself, okay, it's another romance 
is this going to be like green card? And it turned out it wasn't. This was actually a fascinating character study. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised because it's a Peter Ware film, but it is a quite fascinating movie. It is unlike really anything you've seen. Um, I, I would say that this was one of those movies that it was popular when it came out because it did get an Oscar win um, for the supporting character and very well deserving, I, I might add. But this is also a movie that's going to stick with you because there's something that happens in the third act and it's like, oh, wow. It, it's sad, but it's at the same time, it's earned, it makes sense, and at the same time, it is quite impactful. Um, I would definitely recommend The Year of Living Dangerously and um, yeah, that's why it's my number eight. Next up at number seven, we have The Mosquito Coast, which is a movie that I really liked. And I got to say, at the same time, it is quite saddening because it does star River Phoenix. And watching this, you can definitely tell that he was an incredible actor. Holy cow. River Phoenix in this movie is incredible, especially his scenes with Harrison Ford together. Perfection. Harrison Ford plays a character that, let's face it, I forgot to mention with all these other movies, but The Mosquito Coast focuses on a character that is very unlikable. But at the same time, it is someone that we've seen all in life. We see these type of characters in real life. But a lot of times movies don't want to focus on them, at least mainstream movies, because let's face it, a lot of people don't want to watch a movie with an unlikable character. But Peter Ware had the balls to have a character that was unlikable. But at the same time, he does it in a way where it's quite fascinating. You can't help but get wrapped up with this character and his family and their journey. And let me tell you, it's a journey. I'm definitely going to be re revisiting this film down the line. I can see my letter grade and my rating in general going up and um, getting a lot more from it. Because holy cow, this is this is, this is is worth your time 100%. That's why it's my number seven. Next up, my number six is Fearless. Fearless, I really wasn't that looking forward to. I mean, it's a movie that I like Jeff Bridges, but the actual premise, it was kind of like, eh, so it's going to be kind of schmaltzy. And no, it's not a schmaltzy premise at all. In fact, the execution is very sad. But in a really, really earnest and sincere way to where you can't help but get caught up with these characters and with what they're going through. And I think the last 10 minutes especially is like a gut punch. I think that what it does is very impactful. I, I couldn't help but think about the, the last couple of days that I, I saw it. I was like, wow, that was that was quite an ending. Um, again, trying to be ambiguous with, with what happens because I do think that people should see this and go into it knowing as little as possible because for me, that's what happened. And... Yeah, it was very, very interesting and satisfying. Um, definitely worth your time, and, and that's why it's my number six. Next up, my number five, we have Picnic at Hanging Rock. So this this movie is similar to Last Wave. It is a, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. You really, really have to get soaked up with the atmosphere. And, you know, I got to say, the atmosphere is palpable. It, it, is, it is great stuff. Cinematography, score costume design, production design, acting, it all comes together to make a very much so visually stimulating experience. It's really, really good with what they do here. I, I really like it. I will say, go into this not for the mystery, because if you do, you will be disappointed. Go for the atmosphere. Go for the vibe. If you go go on that wavelength, I think you'll really appreciate this film. And um, yeah, I, I quite liked Picnic and Hanging Rock, and um, yeah, that's why it's for number five. Next up, my number four is Witness which stars Harrison Ford. And um, this was a really good film. Like, really, really good. I loved the score. I loved the costume design, production design. I also loved how the cinematography really made uh, the Amish setting feel like a character in itself. Uh, Harrison Ford gives a great performance. It's very well directed. Um, I like the fact that they blend romance and like a, a mystery. I thought that combination, oh, and drama. I thought that combination worked quite well. Uh, it's very, very well put together. If you're really into filmmaking, I would highly recommend you check, um, you know, number four. It's it's quite good. Witness is 100% worth your time. That's why it's my number four. Next up, my number three is Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. So I grew up watching this movie as a young teenager. I, I remember watching it a couple times and saying to myself, first battle is amazing. Second battle is amazing. Everything in between is quite dull. Which is why I decided that I was going to revisit this film uh, a couple weeks ago. And I'm glad that I did because, yeah, the battles are great. They really are. But everything else is incredible as well. I mean, holy cow, the character development, the acting, the chemistry between Paul Bettany and uh, Russell Crowe. It's great. Production design, costume design. I mean, this is a movie that despite it not being based on a true story or, you know, going for like, hey, you know, we're, we're based on a true story. None of that. Despite all that, it is a movie that has a lot of historical authenticity from what I understand. You can definitely tell based on watching this movie. The visuals are outstanding, but it's also worth noting about the audio. The sound mixing is outstanding. 
Um, I have a surround system. It's not the greatest. It's not like a, the a movie theater, if you will. But I was able to really appreciate the sound mixing of this film. Like, example, when there's like gunfire going off and cannonball fire, and it goes from one side of the room all the way to the other. It's just, it's great. It's really impressive. Uh, I like this film quite a lot. I can definitely see myself picking this up on, um, hopefully it comes out in 4K. If not, I'll pick it up on Blu-ray. But uh, yeah, that's my number three. Next up, my number two is uh, The Truman Show. So The Truman Show I saw a decade plus ago, and that's also why I decided I was going to revisit it last week. And I'm glad that I did because this film was outstanding. I really liked how it was blending an original concept with like a character study. And at the same time, it's very fast paced. It's only like 103 minutes, but it flies by. Um, ending is very impactful. It's just a very, very well put together film that is both comedic. Uh, it's dramatic when need be. And it's got a sci-fi concept that is aged like a fine wine. If anything... What we saw 25 years ago is happening now, and it's incredible. This pretty much was the inspiration for reality TV. So, you know, I, I guess it's it's a it's a gift and a curse that we have this movie. But I don't want to know on physical media because as of the filming of this video, it is going to be getting a 4K release in July, July 4th of 2023. So I will be uh, waiting to pick it up on physical media in that format in July. But um, yeah, Truman Show is my number two. And last but not least, we have my number one, which I'm sure many of you have probably guessed already, but my number one is Dead Poet Society. Love this film. It's inspirational. It is a film that is emotionally satisfying. It has incredible acting. It is comedic when need be. It's dramatic when need be. And it's got an ending that definitely is one of my favorite. Um, the last 10 minutes, honestly, the, the latest viewing that I, I, I saw this, it brought tears to my eyes. It is quite a film. Um, for me, it is everything that I love about Peter Ware. Um, he takes a premise that is intriguing and he builds on it. And um, yeah, Dead Poet Society, it's definitely a film that has to be seen. And um, yeah, that's my number one. But yeah, guys, um, so at the end of these ranking videos, um, sometimes I forget, but I do try to talk about the director and if I like them or not, as well as their style. And um, Peter Ware... I gotta say, he is definitely a director that I'm glad that I decided to watch all of his movies because I have a lot of respect for him. He takes premises that are quite intriguing, that focuses on characters that we don't really see too often in films, but then he uses those characters to have a very interesting character study whilst at the same time building an atmosphere that is quite palpable and also having filmmaking that's just incredible. The scores in his movies are really, really good. Um, whenever I watch his movies, I can always tell that there's a score and i feel like a lot of times in movies like as of late their score the score is in the mix but it's in the very very back so you can't even really tell that there's much of a score for speed aware's films you can definitely tell that there's a score and it's all for the better uh, i also think that he does such a great job with the performances like his films are all very well acted but in particular he has a keen interest on um child performances and child performances are something that i know a lot of people criticize but in his work all of the kid actors are really, really good. I mean, let's face it, Ethan Hawke was in the Poet Society, and now he is one of the biggest stars, one of my favorite actors. So he, he knows what he's doing. He does such a great job with these performances uh, and getting, you know, these actors to get it out of them. And, I mean, it's really something. I, I really do like the fact that he, he captures that atmosphere in such an interesting way. Um, his films are also very well shot. There's, like, a, a hint of... Uh, there's a hint of, hmm, what's going on with the cinematography. And by that, I mean that when you're watching his movies, a lot of times the cinematography, it's gorgeous. But then there's other scenes where it's dark and you're like, this seems like something is off. And it's done intentionally and it's done in a way that really makes you feel like you're on your guard. It's like, uh oh, what's going to happen? And I really do like that he has that. He has that ability to put viewers on edge but at the same time really at the same time be welcoming it's he's a very interesting director he's very very much so an auteur i have a lot of respect for peter Ware and um yeah that's my ranking of his work guys very curious to hear your guys ranking um on peter Ware's films let me know in the comment section below and as always guys thank you very much for watching with the subscription notification bell follow me down in the box and i will catch you guys later